Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Monday afternoon, August 5th. We're looking at Window Trader's market profile of the ES and the NQ. So a lot, lot happened today. First, uh, let's put a couple things into context. This is our second largest range of the year and our second largest in over two years as uh, ES, $13.31. NQ is about $19. It is going to be our heaviest volume of the year in SPY, which uh, is nice to see. We're at $127 million right now. The high of the year was $126 million. So we depend on what we do up until 8 o'clock, we will have our highest volume of the year. That's nice. Now, the Bears had every opportunity here when this market opened to really create some havoc. Um, we uh, opened with a massive gap down and then rallied really hard in A and B. Uh, I, I told the room the odds of the gap getting filled were very slim, okay? However, the way they pushed up really made things interesting especially in NQ. ES left a gap still of about, I think, five bucks. NQ is only about three. Now, that's still, on a normal day, a pretty good-sized gap. But the way these markets are moving, um, you know, that's nothing these days. Righty goes out with a nine-wide point of control and their gap, okay? NQ goes out with a nine-wide pock. They have, believe it or not, down three, over 3%, three an afternoon pullback low in K and a nine wide pock. ES just goes out with a nine wide pock, no afternoon pullback, and of course our gaps. We both left very nice buy tails, which we never got into. So a lot of mixed MGI today. The Bears had three huge ones. They had gap, value, and indices, and they held that all day, but it wasn't enough to push the market lower. The Bulls ended up getting the IB high. They got raised POC. They have a buy tail. Now, we did not get an overnight in ES or NQ. That's the seventh time this year in ES we haven't gotten an overnight. Last year, in 250 days, we didn't get an overnight five times. So we already surpassed that, and it's only day 149. Righty did get the overnight low. Um, I had a good day. I was very patient. There was a lot of mixed MGI going on. So um, I took some visual trades. Uh, I took a short. My first trade of the day didn't happen till C period. A and B, when you're getting that kind of an inventory adjustment with the market down that much, I just don't have it in me to want to long it. Now, one of my favorite trades is to take out A's high or low. But again, I really wasn't looking a long B. The good news is I didn't short A or B. I did short C, and I got fortunate. It looked like they were going to stop the one-time framing in NQ, so I shorted it, and I did. I got eight points out of it. But lo and behold, thank goodness I got out of it. It ripped higher after that. So that was my first trade of the day in C. I waited a full hour. Then in D period, I caught the long very nicely to get the IB high. That's one of my favorite trades we talk about. Then I was kind of looking on to do it in ES. Well, first I took a long in ES to get it in um, D period. Took a loss on it. Then again in E period, it started... I was down, took a, a loss again, but then when it started going back up, I took a five lot and it finally uh, blew through there. So when I was down, I was down about seven points overall. I ended up going up nine points. So I had a nice 16 point reversal in ES. Um, then in, I, uh, again in ES, when we filled the single prints, in G period, took a long, I thought maybe we'd get a responsive bounce off of it. We didn't. Lost four points on that. And then um, in K period, in ES, I took a long against half back. I wasn't liking it. Took it off for a point loss. 
But I nailed NQ. I got a two lot at the uh, pullback and did very well on that. So overall on ES, I made like four points. But NQ, I made just under 70. Again, nothing huge. I'm a, Look, I'm a singles and double hitter, especially in a market such as we've seen uh, the last couple of days. Um, you know, I, I don't have a problem doing that. There's, look, the problem with most traders is they're trying to impress people. Okay? There's only one person you have to impress. And that's yourself. <laughs> that's it. It doesn't matter. Anybody, I'm not trying to impress anybody in my room. They're not trying to impress me. God forbid you're trying to impress anybody on social media because you know they're all liars. So please keep that in mind while you're trading. That's 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 the main thing. We're here to make money, not to impress anybody. So, you know, some people would say, well, I feel embarrassed. I didn't take a trade with that kind of range in A and B. Who cares? Who cares? If there's not something I, I see and it wasn't, who cares? So please keep that in mind. I'm not going to uh, go through the reference points since I put these in bigger increments. What I do want to do is go to the chart and um, just an ES uh, today and break it down uh, now. So remember, this is only August 5th. So we have no idea how large this balance is going to be. Markets don't go bull bear. So if that was the low, great. Then you could say it's either a three-month balance or a six-month balance. It depends what you would want to use. But if it went down another 100 points, it's still balance in August. So right now we're forming our balance on the monthly. The weekly is clearly down. And more importantly, it's a weekly gap. Now weekly gaps and monthly gaps generally don't hold. But we'll see. We're, you know, and then on the daily, we've come from Thursday's high in three days. We've come down 7%. That's a lot. Is the market stretched? Eh, possibly. I don't know. We're up to $134 million already. So they're doing a lot of volume after hours, which is cool. You know, just the way you don't try to pick tops, you don't try to pick bottoms. I have no idea. But we did do a lot of discussing in the room. That's another thing. Remember I said this morning on the video? The, the moderator in your room better keep it calm and clear and concise. That's what we do in this trading room. So we spoke a lot today about what are we looking for? People are like, well, what do you think going forward? I'm like, look, here's my thought. If we take out um, today's high at some point and fill the gap, then... The damage might be done for a while, especially if we hold the excess from this morning. If we don't do that, then I think we'll take the excess back and test the 200-day moving average. Do I know that for sure? Of course not. I just look at charts. I think I'm very good at breaking down charts and looking at MGI. Look, we can take out today's high, fill the gap, and go test Friday's high and then finally fail and roll over. Sometimes the market has to rally before it breaks some more. I do know this, though. It's short-term traders who ruled this market again today. There is no way in the world long-term money would have let this market gap lower and take back $10 of that gap in two time frames. It will never happen. So you know it was short-term emotional trading, both selling it and buying it to cover and momentum buyers. That's a fact. Okay? So we're going to monitor for tomorrow. Are we able to take out today's high? If we are and we fill the gap, we might have a short-term bottom in. However, if we take out today's low and hold the gap, not only is the excess gone, but then I think the odds of testing the 200-day moving average go much higher. Come and check us out at CamelbackTrading.org. I think we'll save you a lot of money and make you a lot of money just by breaking down what the market does. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing to this channel. Enjoy your evening, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.